my name is Akinyo Dongo. I am a child of God, saved by the grace. I am born again Christian. I'm a mother, a designer, a mentor to many, and striving to be a good steward of what God has bestowed upon me. And yes, you're in my space. <laughs> Okay, what um, my work entails is a lot in different areas because I have different aspects of my business and, and people that I, I work with. Uh, there's a church aspect, there is the family aspect, there's the business aspect, there's the giving back aspect. Um, so it depends on which aspect you'd want me to focus on or all the aspects. <laughs> but um, basically, my day to day, how it starts is I wake up very early at 4 a.m. and definitely do my Bible study and pray. That's my first, the first thing that I do. And after that, I do my exercises. Of course, now with COVID, there's no gym. <laughs> so I run on the road, just do my running or walking in the morning. Um, come back home, prepare breakfast for my children, uh, drop them to school when it is school days or, you know, and then come to work. Um, and being that I have different locations for my businesses, um, where you are right now is the store, the high-end store, where we see our clients, is where we meet all our clients, we book appointments, and we see them on appointment only. And um, then I have the, a production in a different location, and the school. <laughs> uh, we have a fashion school, Mefa Institute of Design, where we train um, young designers or those who want to be designers. Uh, we offer diploma, certificate, artisan and part-time classes for them. And then we also have um, training for children that children can be brought to the institute to train on fashion. So we have fashion for kids because I do believe that talent needs to be nurtured when they're still younger. And uh, looking at my life, I think that is a very important part of even my legacy and passing on the baton to the next generation. So it's very critical and very close to my heart. And, um, and production as well. So sometimes I go into the production to just check what is going on, but I have a team, a great team that I work with uh, that are able to see through the production, see through the running of the school and also the training of the children. And um, as I see clients and look for other opportunities for them. Now, Mefa Institute is an institute that is registered with the Ministry of Higher Education, Science and Technology in line with the Technical, Industrial, Vocational and Entrepreneurship Training Program. On another note is that I'm also the chair of Kenya Fashion Council, uh, which I pioneered and I'm the first chair and a director too, because I believe in changing the narrative and also just just ensuring that there's a sp there's space, a conducive space for designers and upcoming designers and a greater future for the generations to come. Because it's, it's a journey, the fashion space is not an easy space and I felt that it was necessary for us as a country to have a body that is going to assist and also work with government in regard to, you know, uh, putting policies and just engaging with government in Putin. So it was very critical. So some, some of the time I give my time to that uh, and uh, work with a great team. With, we have board of uh, some board members also that we work with. Uh, we have partners that we're working with. That's really great for me. And those are some of the things that I've worked on and I can say, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, <laughs> you know, to do that. Just also to give my time and to give my knowledge to others as well. Um, when it's about evening, maybe three o'clock, I start winding up. My day ends very early, uh, especially because I have a daughter who uh, is in school. So they leave, the school leaves at about 3.30. So I have to, by three o'clock, I'm winding up from the office to go and pick my daughter from school, then go home, do homework. And after homework, have dinner, because we cook <laughs> on our own. And then do my aerobics again before I sleep either with her or my sons because I love to dance and of course we put our music full blast and just dance and um, then go to bed 
by eight or nine o'clock, it depends. What I love the most about my day is my time with my children. And of course, I've got young adults, so they're no longer children, but uh, in fact, they don't need me a lot. <laughs> it's me who always look for them. They're like, I'm like, eh, what's going on? So I have one daughter who I really spend a lot of my time with. So those are the greatest, greatest moments for me is with my family. Um, just, you know, talking to them, understanding, because my sons brief me on the happenings of what's going on. Sometimes I'm not aware of what is happening in the music scene, uh, what's happening with the young people. So just interesting to just listen to them and, and get the information. <laughs> um, yeah, those are my greatest moments uh, in my life. And um, also at work, when it comes to my call, you know, I always say being in the fashion space is actually my purpose. So what makes me tick in my purpose is when I'm able to impact other people's lives. Um, I like to mentor, I love young people, I love designers, so I mentor lots of designers across Africa under the Fashion Agenda Africa, an, uh, an organization that I started a few years ago just to mentor and coach and um, just encourage younger designers to never give, give up but also hang on and believe that they can achieve anything they want to achieve yeah it's all in the mind so that gives me joy uh, because i'm very deliberate on what i leave behind when i go <laughs> and uh, it's not just making money and just being in the space you know where you're saying you're the top woman or you're, you're up there but i want to believe that god enabled me to be where i am not for myself but to be a light to others so that i may be able to go back and light other people's candles and make a brighter Africa. I wanted to do fashion design, but I wasn't in knowledge of schools here. And so when I heard of MEFA, I came here and I spoke to Mr. Akinyi and I was sold, I was completely sold. To describe MEFA with one word, I describe it as awesome. I grew up in the village, um, in a village called Rangala in Siaya district, Siaya county, sorry, Siaya county now. And um, my parents were very uh, supportive in regard to just ensuring that we grow, you know, uh, in a better way. Uh, my dad was a school buzzer at Ambira High School, and my mom was a tailor and owned a shop as well. So I, we grew around, you know, seeing my mom stitch clothes and make some, and I could also get some pieces and do some things. But I reflect back and I said, I wanted to do something better than what my mom was doing. Um, you know, can, can I train? Can I do this thing better? And also growing up as a very creative child, it was very difficult to understand me, you know, amongst other siblings, whether it's in school or um, at home, because I was always singing, dancing, I was in everything. You know, anything creative, it's me. So um, that's where my journey began. And when I finished high school, I went for military training and I did it for about two and a half years. And then I felt like, mm, yeah, I need to do something. <laughs> and I was privileged to go to a very, uh, to a local uh, college where I trained as a designer and started working my journey through. Um, it's not been a walk in the park, it's been a journey where, you know, I started as, every, I was everything. I was the tailor, the designer, the accountant, the messenger, the receptionist, the tail, yani everything. I was doing literally everything on my own. And of course, that's how most people start because not everybody has a privilege to have the capital and to employ people immediately. And I started from home. Um, in my kids' bedroom, I always say that my machines were their lullaby. They slept through the night as I stitched, and um, that's how I was able to grow my brand. My clients used to come at home. Some of them, uh, you know, they can attest to that. They come to my house, go and fit, come and check it out, and we adjust. Uh, my clients, the clients who couldn't be able to come to my, to the house, I I would go to as far as you know UN headquarters, you know Gigiri, you know go to every place you know go to the toilet you know go fit check pin 
put it back in the bag, come back home, do adjustments at night, tomorrow take it back. I mean, it, it was literally working it out and, and lying. And I think for me that really made me understand the challenges that designers do face and younger people or people who are just starting up can face. And it's a privilege that I was going, I went through that. I don't say it's a, a challenge that really made me, I can look back and say I regret. No, I don't regret anything that I went through in my life. I don't regret because it's a learning process and it's a stepping stone. Because if I didn't step on those stones, I wouldn't be here because those are part of the steps of where I am. And I want to believe that God is creating more steps for me so that I'm able to climb on those steps and go further and further and further as, as, as we can, you know. <laughs> Thank you.